Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you the danger of rotating before your rotation speed. Now this is uh, one of those things that most people don't think about too too much, uh, you know they just get in a plane go kind of a thing, they don't really worry about those things. But it's actually fairly dangerous in the real world and we'll take a look at that right now. So here we are, this is uh, Gardner, Massachusetts. So this is a pretty rinky dink airport, I've been here a few times, it's just kind of one of those airports, it's like I just need something 50 miles away, where do I go? And this is usually where I end up. Uh, the first thing I find very fascinating here is uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator put me on the wrong runway, which that could that could complicate things for us. But for the sake of our demonstration here, we're going to disable that just so we don't have to uh, compete with one more thing to make things challenging for us. So what we're going to do is a uh, standard takeoff here. We're going to run down the runway. We're going to get to our magical 55 knots, and we're going to go ahead and pull back on the stick, do everything the way we're supposed to do. Uh, what I want you to observe here is how much runway we take up and how long it takes our aircraft to get up to 50 feet. Now, if you look on the far side, you've got these big, nasty little uh, trees here that uh, we're definitely going to try to avoid as best we can as we approach them. So, uh, let's see what happens here. So, again, full power. Start running. Go ahead and give it some uh, right, right, right away. It's uh, going to sneak around. In the real world, it is such a joke to keep the plane in the center line. The only time you really have difficulty with that is when you're landing in a crosswind. And then it's a little more exercise, but it's really not that bad. There's a 25. We're looking at 35. 40 knots. 50. Let's go. We're going to pitch right up to about seven and a half degrees. And we're just going to let the aircraft... Brrrr, oh, brute force. Now, notice as uh, we're starting to climb here, I'm just looking out the window so you can see it very closely. Um, we're making some pretty good time. Um, just clearing those trees. Just clearing those trees. Now, I want you to keep that burnt into your head for a second here that's going to be something that's going to be a bit of a problem for us. Uh, yeah, I probably could have ridden the VY a little more aggressively there. The reason I chose Gardner Mass for this purpose is because I know that runway is tiny and causes some issues. So no problems. Um, we got close. Um, we definitely, that, that could have been dangerous. That could have been dangerous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause and I'll reload everything again. There we are. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to pull back on the stick before we get to our 55 knots. So I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing I did before. Go ahead and give it full power. Start racing down the runway. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll pull the stick back here. Now, you're not supposed to do this. And there's a lot of reasons for this. Now, if you're doing a soft field takeoff, you kind of have to do this because this is the only way you can guarantee that I uh, basically don't dig in with the front wheel. So uh, we're going to get airborne as fast as we can here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I struck the tail about four or five times there. Okay, okay, let's go ahead and accelerate to our 75 knots here. Whoa. And you can see uh, we missed the trees by about 10 or 15 feet there. So it was a substantial <laughs> and potentially life-threatening reduction in performance on this aircraft. So the key thing here is um, you've got to remember that with airplanes, uh, you've got that ground effect where if your wing is within half of the distance of its length on the ground, you have a reduction in drag, which gives you that unnecessary or dangerous confidence that, oh, I'll have no difficulty, of course, uh, getting myself into the air here. And you, know, you pull back, it feels good. But as you float out of that ground effect, the drag smacks the plane. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I really need a little extra speed. Then you find yourself on the wrong side of the region of reversal. And then you could potentially have ended up in those trees that we saw back there. Now, some of you are sitting there going, is that runway really that dangerous? It kind of is, I'll believe it or not. And it's in a valley. Now, the other direction is even sketchier, by the way. Now, of course, at this point, you're sitting there going, is there a safer way to do that? Well, there actually is. The safer way to do that is to bring on our friend the flaps. Now, the nice thing about the flaps on a Cessna 172 is you can use flaps 10 or you can use flaps 20 here. And what that will do is that actually, as you know, it will increase the curvature of the wing a little bit without having a massive impact on the drag of the aircraft. Now, remember, it's drag that gets you in this case. It's not necessarily a lack of thrust. So now if we apply short field technique, we'll go ahead and hold down the brakes. I love how the uh, brakes are like auto engage. We'll go ahead and apply full power. We're going to pull it back just slightly towards us. Wait until it's at full power. We're going to go ahead and release and get going here. Now, the interesting thing is that when you're learning to do these maneuvers in the real world, you're sitting there going, does it really make that much difference if you let the thing come up to speed? It does if you're in a turbo prop. But for piston engines, it comes up to speed really fast. So what we're going to do is we're just going to apply a tiny bit of back pressure. Again, not too much, not too little. We're going to make sure we get our speed, and we're just going to glide off the ground just like that. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to hold our VX as opposed to our VY, which is going to be right there at about eh, 60 knots. Now notice this plane isn't going, ee, 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 
or any of that stuff at all. And the reason for that is because we had a little notch of flaps there to kind of help us out. Now we're just going to hold this angle and we're going to enjoy the journey upwards. And you can see we are casually clear of those trees below us, which is why it's so important to use proper technique. Now, one of the newbie mistakes, by the way, I'll show everybody's favorite newbie mistake. Come up here like this and you pop the flaps up. Oh, it didn't do it. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> this is a nice 180 horsepower Cessna. It, it can, there it is. You'll suddenly get a uh, stall warnings because of the uh, decrease of the curvature that we're doing there. So as you can see, uh, pulling back at the right time is important, but what's even more important is using the appropriate technique, appropriate flap setting for all landings where there seems to be any potential where things are that short. Enjoy.